Good morning, everyone. As always, what you're supposed to do if you call yourself a follower of Christ, a saint, whatever you want to call yourself, a person that reads this Bible and studies this Bible and want to live according to the rules and regulations and commandments of this Bible, whatever you call yourself, you put your cross on first and you don't take it off. You don't take it off. You keep it on every day, all day. And the thing is, if you keep it on every day out there when you sleep, God's going to sustain you too. You know, the Bible says some people can't sleep unless they've done wickedness. That's why a lot of people are up at night. Think about it. When you was younger and you was in the world and you was doing the things of the world, you was always a night person, right? You didn't want to go home until you got into some foolishness. Now you're a grown man or a grown woman. And the Bible says, when I was a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I did away with childish things. Why a lot of Christians still acting like children? Still trying to hang with the young crowd. Still trying to do what young folks do. Mm. Well, you're still a baby then. If you acting like the, and I see this in this world right now. A lot of older people are trying to act like the young people. Wrong. You should be setting an example for them. Not them setting the example for you. You had your time to enjoy yourself like an ecclesiastic. Oh, young man, do whatever your heart pushes you to. You don't know where to prosper. But keep in mind, remove evil far away from you. Because of these things, God will bring it to judgment. Remember that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from 2 Peter today. I'm going to tell you why I'm reading from it. Yesterday, uh, me and my wife was talking back and forth, and texting. She was, like, she was just checking on me. Like, me, I'm at a point right now, I'm kind of bitter. Like, what's the use of check, checking on me for? You know. But anyway, long story short. You know, God led me to a scripture to send to it. And I'm going to read the context of the scripture right now. Second Peter chapter 2. Listen closely. But there were false prophets also among the people. And as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, most people think denying the Lord is, I don't believe in you. That's, a one, that's one way. What's another way to deny the Lord? To read his words, to study his words, to see what his word says, and go against it anyway. That's denying the Lord. Now, listen closely. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now think about what I just said. It's not like it's just going to be like straight evil. It's going to be deceitful. Because you got to listen to close to what he's saying. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves Swift destruction. How can you deny the Lord that bought you? I'm telling you. Going against his words. Going against what he says. How he says to live. And many shall fight upon his ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Whose judgment now of a long time endureth, I mean lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Listen closely. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be preserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So what's the example? If you shall live ungodly. Think about it. He gave two stories. He's going to talk about. He's talking about Noah. 
right? And he's going to talk about Lot. Two people living in an evil spot, evil time, in an evil place, but they were delivered in their righteousness, but everybody else perished. And turning the cities of God, Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them examples to those that should live ungodly, that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how, listen closely, you remember I was talking about, if you hear his, you don't really face the judgment. Listen closely. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the, ungod the, the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to, the, to be punished. Listen, listen, let's read that again. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Read this Bible. You'll realize what God considers uncleanness and all that. And despise government. Presumptions are they. Self-willed they are. Not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not real accusations against them before the Lord, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not. Listen close to what he said. They speak evil of the things that they understand not. Now go back, false teachers. They speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. God says, I give them over to their evil ways, right? And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. As they counted, listen closely, that they counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Listen closely. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Listen closely. Having eyes full of adultery. And then that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bashor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now, a lot of people look, don't just think money when they say wages of unrighteousness. They just love unrighteousness. But was rebuked for his inequity. The dumb man speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds they are, carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Think about it. Basically, God is already pronouncing judgment. But when they speak great swelling words of vanity, when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. What are you saying? You read the word, you studied the word, you see what the word says. And then along come these false teachers. I'm not just talking about pastors in the pulpit. I'm talking about family members, friends, the, the people, how their lifestyle are. Now listen to closely. It's an old saying, they say, misery loves company. Let's check this out. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought into bondage. Let's read that again. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. It's okay. You can do that. You can do what you want. You know what the word says. But them people luring you in through your temptation. When it's sin produced, when you're drawn away by your own lust and enticed, this one sin is produced. Like, let's say you read this word and you know what God commands of you. You know exactly what God tells you. And then along come people who try to draw you away. Devils, demons, wicked people. You know, God don't care what you do. He forgot for our sins. You can live how you want to live type stuff. And then the unstable soul, the second stage of the soul in the sea, but when persecution arises, in regards to the word, they fall away. Mm -hmm. They fall away. Now listen closely here. 
chapter 20. This is what he told me to send it. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is this Bible, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Because you know the truth now. What he said, this is a promise. This is like, this is the word of God here. The latter end is worse than them, than the beginning. Now think, after constant, let's say you constantly backslides. You try to get back right, you go back to the truth and you backslide again. You keep going, but you go backslide again. Every time you backslide, it gets harder for you to get back on the right path. That's basically what this is explaining. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, they have backslid again and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it's happened unto them according to the truth proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her, her wallowing in the mire. Backsliding is the worst. One of the worst things a Christian can do. And I have backslid plenty of times. And I know it gets harder every time. You know, God is trying to pull you away from the world and the people of the world. Think about this. Lot, one person in the whole city. No matter what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot did not do it. Noah, what was going on in the world in the beginning. Noah was like, no, I'm not no part of it. But a lot of people want back out there. And that's how I feel my wife was. She wants back. And then... She wants back in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now listen to what the word says again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Let's see you keep going back and forth. It gets worse and worse. And it gets harder for you to come back to the Lord. And you got to think about it. I always use myself as an example. You know, since I've been with my wife, my the Lord told me to read the word to her. So I read it to her and I studied with her for years and years and our years. And I remember back and I told her the exact these words. I said, it's kind of weird. You know, I remember when I left the first time in 2022. I'm not going to talk your heads out too much today. But I remember I left in 2022. Actually, I didn't leave. I was forced to leave. You know, I remember my wife was like, you, I don't want to be with you no more. So she kicked me out. She packed my bags up. She put them on my truck. And I left. And they led me to where I am today. But when I left, you know, I told her some things. I was like, hey, man, it's not going to go good here. You know, I warned her. So I'm gone. I used to get messages here, from here, here, and there, how things are going so bad there. She didn't let a lot of people into the house. People who live a certain lifestyle, a lifestyle she used to live. And she let them back in, and now the bills are not being paid. Now this ain't being paid, you know. And I was praying because I, I wanted my wife back. But around May of that first year of my separation, we separated like in January. And in 2022, around April or May, or no, around May, around our anniversary time, I went and a voice in my head was like, go get your wife. So I went and got her. And after being with me probably about a month or so, she left again. She left around May. I mean, right after May. And then the next year, around the same time period, around this time of year, she was going through a hard time. She about to lose the house. She had nowhere to go. I let her back in. Right? Last year. Through last year, she left a few times. The world keeps putting her back out there. My lifestyle seems to be boring to her. I'm just being real. And I'm not lying. I don't like to go out. I don't like to be around certain folks. That's just who I am. You understand? But her, on the other hand, she always draw back to the same area. Mm -hmm. The same area. 
It don't matter what. When she leave here, she go back to the same area, the same people. So last year she left one time. Towards the end of the year, by October or something. And she called me to come get her. And the Lord put it in my mind, go get her. So I came, went and got her. When I got in the car, she just started rambling. She still said, kept saying, she running to the people who saying, go back home. Go back home to your husband. Go back home to your husband. And I was like, hey, it is what it is, man. Right? So, bring her back in. Throughout the rest of the year, same thing. Left, come back. Left, come back. I always go back to the same area where I got her from. So this time, she left again. Before New Year, she left again. She was gone for about a week or two. Come, I let her back in. God said, let her back in. I'm like, okay, I let her back in. But he had a stimulation this time. He said, if she come to you, let her back in. All right. So I'm sitting here in the house. They join me a beer or something. I hear a knock on the door. It's her. She shows up at the doorsteps. God said, let her back in. Right. So, again, she start the same process. Wanting to go out. Once you get a taste of what's out there, it keeps drawing you back. And I'm learning this just watching her. If something keeps drawing you back. You keep letting it back in. So come around April. Or should I say March? It's been two months now. Around March, right before Easter, we went to church Sunday. We went to a church on Sunday. And I'm praying, I'm praying. We come back. She's like, I don't want to be here no more. She got into arguing with me. I went to sleep. I woke up. She was gone. Mm -hmm. She was gone. Mm -hmm. Later come to find out, guess where she is? The same place where God had me pick her up. But she had messengers come and say, go back home to your husband. She's back at the same house. I'm like, wow, how is that even possible? Let's read this again after I just told you what I just said. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them to who live in error. Now, I know this house. I know this establishment. Everything known to man goes on here. It's not no holy house. It's not a God-filled house. Everything goes, <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. And it's the crazy thing. But let's read the rest. If for if it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. God has given her a husband that works. Yes, he's not fun. He's trying to save your soul. He's trying to lead you in the right way. And a lot of people do that with their husbands or their wives. They're like, you're too boring. You're... I, my friends and stuff, they doing this. They doing that. Mm. Let's read that again. Chapter 2, verse 90. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. You see, I'm not lying to you. I'm not saying I'm a perfect man. I'm not. But over the years, I didn't see where she keeps running back to. The old her. The old lifestyle. This new God-fearing lifestyle is too boring for a lot of people. They don't want to this. They don't want to live a life like this. But let me read something from Revelations. Let me pause first. <laughs> 